Hey guys, what's up? John here from flyatmikealpha.com and today we are flying in these beautiful Alaskan VFR conditions out here over the Kenai Peninsula approaching Anchorage. We're going to be going into Lake Hood today. Kind of interesting little piece of Class Delta airspace there. So we're going to take you through a step-by-step -step tutorial of how to get into Lake Hood. All right, so there's a couple steps we have to go through first before going into Lake Hood and before talking to anyone. Step one is going to be getting the ATIS for Lake Hood. So there's ATIS for Anchorage, there's ATIS for Lake Hood. We're gonna get the ATIS for Lake Hood, that's where we're gonna be landing. We're gonna be landing at the strip today because we're on wheels. It'd be a little bit too eventful if we were trying to land in the water. So we'll get the ATIS for Lake Hood, then we're going to call up Approach, then most likely Approach will hand us off to Anchorage Tower, Ted Stevens Tower, and then get handed off to Lake Hood Tower, who will clear us to land going into the strip. Now, it's important to specify that we're going to this strip because they won't know if we're a Cessna 170 on wheels or a Cessna 170 on floats. So when we call up approach, we're going to let them know we're going to this strip. So first, let's go ahead and get the ATIS. At the Alpha. Lincoln Tower Commission Alpha, 2053 to the weather, wind of variable at five, visibility one zero, ceiling 7,000 overcast. Temperature 9, dew point 1, out number 29 or 79 or West Street News Line, departing west in runway 32. Advise on contact, you have Alpha. All right, so if that was too fast for you, you can listen to it again. Write it all down. Alpha, 2053 to the weather. Luckily, we've got it all here. They are landing west. Information Alpha, variable at 5, 2, 9 or 7, 9 or on the altimeter. Planning runway 32, and we can probably expect the gravel pit arrival for this one. So all the arrivals are spelled out for us in the Alaska chart supplement, where they actually depict them, sort of like instrument arrivals and departure procedures. But these are VFR arrival and departure procedures going into Lake Hood. So we can go ahead and put our little ATIS card up here. So we remember what we got. So now we have Anchorage Approach dialed up on 26.4 because we we're coming from the south here. We just follow what's in that little magenta box in the sectional chart there to the south of the airport. We've got our ATIS card here. It's Information Alpha. We're going to give them a call here in just a second. We're going to give them our position in reference to a VFR reporting point like Bar Bar Lake, or we could just give them our position in reference to Ted Stevens or Lake Hood. We could say that we're 20 miles south or 20 miles southwest or wherever we are in relation to the airport. We're going to go ahead and when we're about a mile or two west of Bar Bar Lake, give them a call. All right, so it's those basic four W's, right? Who we're calling, who we are, where we are, what we want to do, and the information that we have on that initial call up since we are going to be going into land somewhere. So let's go ahead and give Anchorage Approach a call here while they got a little break on the radio. Anchorage Approach, Cessna 2962 Delta, currently one mile west of Bar Bar Lake, landing Lake Hood Strip with Alpha. November 2962 Delta Anchorage Approach, squad 0132. 0132, 2962 Delta. So we repeat back the full call sign because they read back our full call sign. So until they abbreviate it, we can't really abbreviate our call sign. And of course, we read back the squawk code 0132. We type that in. We're in altitude reporting mode. They're going to go ahead and come back when our wear radar identified. November 62 Delta, you are a radar contact one mile west of Bear Bear Lake at 3100 C type aircraft. And uh, position altitude checks. Type is a Cessna 170 for 62 Delta. November 62 Delta, Roger, and fly the Tudor overpass arrival for Lake Hood. Tudor overpass arrival for Lake Hood, 62 Delta. So, a small little side note. I know I said you can expect a gravel pit arrival, and that's what I was expecting all last summer, and that's what they were giving us all last summer, but we just got back to Alaska. It's May 2019, and guess what? Things changed ever so slightly. Just got off the phone with Anchorage Tracon. John lied to you. No, I didn't. Thank you very much. I just got off the phone with Anchorage Tracon, and what actually has happened now is Ted Stevens Tower, Anchorage International Tower, doesn't want small little airplanes flying right over top of their runways when they're really busy. So from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m., they don't want you doing the gravel pit arrival. Basically, they won't even let you do the gravel pit arrival as of right now. You can request it before 10 a.m. or after 6 p.m., but the pilot has to request it, and then they may grant it to you. If you request it from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m., they won't give it to you, and they typically will not be offering it any longer. Now they're offering and issuing the Tudor overpass arrival. A little bit of a pain in the butt, 
when you're coming from Kenai or from down south and you want to go into Anchorage and you wind up having to go the long way around, you'll see that in just a second here what happened to us when we went ahead and called up approach expecting the gravel pit arrival. But just want to update you on that. I did not lie. I just told you guys to expect a gravel pit arrival when really you should be expecting the Tudor overpass until they change their procedures probably again here in the near future. You can keep up to speed on that with Anchorage Tracon. Just call them up, ask them if you're curious at all, or talk to them on the radio next time you're chatting with them or you're coming into Lake Hood. But as of right now, expect the Tudor overpass arrival when you're coming from the south. Don't expect the gravel pit arrival. Let's get back to the video. So as we fly over Turnigan Arm here from the south, we're going to stay clear of the Class Charlie airspace. That's the idea here with the Tudor overpass arrival is you stay outside the Charlie airspace, you come around to the right here, and you get hooked up right at the corner of Tudor and Muldoon Road. So you're going to fly from Rabbit Creek to the corner of Tudor and Muldoon Road at 1,500 feet MSL, 1,500 feet. Then you're going to make that left turn and start proceeding inbound at 1,500 feet as well. And the corridor you're really shooting for is in between International Airport Road and Tudor Road. Closer to Tudor Road, ideally, you don't want to be on the extended center line of the east runways out of Ted Stevens International. Keep in mind that those big jets departing out of Ted Stevens depart oftentimes on runway heading, and if there's a strong wind out of the south, it can push them towards Tudor Road. Make sure you're at the correct altitude, 1,500 feet inbound, and either on top of Tudor Road or just slightly south of it, because that will keep you clear of Merrill's airspace as well. Calling 60 Delta traffic to a clock three miles southbound Cessna 1000. Contact Lake Hood Tower, good day. Looking for traffic, we'll go over Tower 462 Delta, good day. Calling 4 for November, traffic 1 o'clock. All right, so approach is handed us off right to Lake Hood Tower because we're on the Tudor overpass arrival. No sense in talking to Anchorage Tower on this one. We'll go ahead and contact Lake Hood Tower. Lake Hood Tower, Cessna 2962 Delta, 6 Southwest, Tudor overpass arrival for Lake Hood Strip. Number 2962 Delta, Lake Hood Tower, approach to the press for the west. Report for the west, 62 Delta. So what Lake Hood Tower asks us to do is to go ahead and report when we're over top of Tudor Road, flying towards the airport, and we get right over top of Tudor Overpass, the overpass that goes over the highway for Tudor Road. The Lake Hood Tower, Cessna 2962 Delta, Tudor Overpass. Cessna 62 Delta, West Court Land. I just confirmed for 62 Delta, it's uh, landing at the Strip 32. Number 62 Delta, Roger, one more 32 Court Land. The land runway 32 for 62 Delta. So what happens there is, even though we had said to approach initially that we were landing at the Strip, somewhere along the line, Tower kind of thought that we were a float plane landing west, so landing in the water. So when he said, Clear to land west, well, we actually want to be clear to land on runway 32. So once we hear the words runway 32, then we read that back and just confirm that he knows, in fact, we're landing at the strip. All right, see so you're in the way of the flaps. Number 62 Delta, just confirm you are going to the strip, runway 32. Affirmative for 62 Delta. Roger. November 0, Papa Mike, cross the east-west water line. Cross east-west, sir, Papa Mike. So normally there's not a whole lot of confusion between you and ATC as to whether you're going to the water or the strip. I'm not sure why there was a little bit more confusion today. Part of the reason for that radio call, why he double checked with us is he wanted to go ahead and make sure we were in fact going to the strip, not landing on the water, before he gave permission to the float plane to go ahead and cross the water runway. So now all there is left to do is fly this right base for runway 32 here. We're kind of trying to stay clear of the water runway-ish, trying to stay just to the right of it so we're not directly over flying that water runway, staying clear of all the float planes, and then we'll report when we're down and clear at the strip. And Lake Hood Tower, Cessna 62 Delta is down and clear. Cessna 62 Delta, Roger. So a little bit of helpful information if you don't plan to park right there at the strip on the transient parking there at Lake Hood if you're going to be taxing towards the hangars. 121.75 is the frequency where you'll click the mic three times to so go ahead and open up the gate to let yourself out of the area at the strip onto the taxiway that can take you either towards Ted Stevens International or towards any of the other hangars around Lake Hood. Now before we go ahead and review the other ways to arrive into Lake Hood, the other arrival procedures, let's go ahead and just take a basic overview of the airspace. So they've done a really good job smushing a whole lot of stuff into a really tiny space on this chart. Let's go ahead and identify all the Class Charlie airspace we have around here first. Well, 
we can see here that we have the outer ring of the class Charlie. This goes from 4,100 feet MSL down to 1,400 feet MSL. So at 1,399 feet, you'd be below it in this area here. Now over here, over towards Merrill, we can see that it goes from 1,400 up to only 1,900. So it'd be easy to be above the class Charlie airspace there. And then closer to the airport, we have this little chunk here that goes from 4,100 down to 600 feet. So it leaves you just a little sliver of space to be underneath the class Charlie there. And then at the surface area here, 4,100 feet MSL on down to the surface. And that's going to be the surface area of the class Charlie. Now let's go ahead and identify where our class Delta airports are. Well, for starters, we have Lake Hood, and the class Delta airspace at Lake Hood is rather compact and rather strangely shaped. It basically is this little tiny cut around here that borders up to the Charlie, and then also borders with this little slice of Merrill's Class D airspace. So that is Class D airspace, and we can see here we have that little 2.5 in that little segmented box there. That means the Class Delta airspace goes from the surface up to 2,500 feet MSL. Now when we look over towards Merrill, we can see that they have their Class Delta airspace outlined here around Merrill in this funny little shape. Again, it borders part of the Class Charlie over there and then comes over to border up with Almendorf Air Force Base. Their Class Delta airspace is also from the surface to 2,500 feet as denoted here in that little segmented box. And then we have some more Class Delta airspace that borders the Class Charlie airspace. And it is for Elmendorf here in this little segment that goes from the surface to 3,000 feet. And then we have Bryant Army Air Force Base. And then we have Bryant over here on the side, and that class Delta airspace, for whatever reason, they decide to stop it at 2,900 feet. So from the surface up to 2,900 in that area. We also have this restricted airspace that borders up to that class Delta airspace to the northeast here. And that restricted airspace we typically avoid. They rarely let us go through it, even when we ask. And restricted airspace requires prior permission to fly through from ATC. Now there is some other symbology here on the chart that makes it a little more convoluted, like the VOR ring and like the wildlife areas they've denoted here. We can kind of ignore those wildlife areas as we fly in and out of Lake Hood because at the end of the day, we're going to be on published arrival and departure procedures for the most part as we arrive and depart into Lake Hood. So now that we have a basic understanding of what all this airspace looks like on the chart and how it's classified, let's jump back into looking at the other arrival options into Lake Hood. So there's two other common arrival procedures that you will be using when you go in and out of Lake Hood, especially coming from the north and northwest. These are going to be the west and east routes. So let's look at the east route first. Now, if the east route is in use, that means that they are landing and departing runway 14 and the east, south, or southeast water lanes. So if they assign you the east route, if you call up approach and they give you the east route, well then plan to fly over the boat hull, cross the Knick arm, cross that waterway at 1200 feet MSL, and then make a straight in approach to runway 14 or towards the east, south, or southeast water lanes. Now, you can also cross over at 2,200 feet MSL, in which case that would necessitate you talking to approach control, to Anchorage approach. It is possible to just get the ATIS and talk directly to Lake Hood Tower and not talk to approach when using the east route, when you're approaching from the north or the northwest, coming in using the east route to go ahead and cross over the boat hull, 1,200 feet MSL, that keeps you clear of the Class Charlie airspace, and then go ahead and proceed as tower instructs you. Now when the west routes are in use and you're coming in from the north or the northwest, it's just slightly different. Still, same rule applies where you could just get the ATIS and only talk to tower if you go at 1200 feet MSL across the Kinnick arm. So in this case, you're going to go ahead and fly over Point McKinsey directly over top of Point McKinsey because there's going to be outbounds flying over the boat hull and note it's the boat hull but a lot of people refer to this as the boat hull, or it sounds like they say boat hull, even though it is in fact boat hull. So even ATC says boat hull sometimes. Don't get confused, it's the same thing. Basically, as you fly over Point McKinsey, 1,200 feet MSL, fly directly to the ballpark, and then expect to make right traffic for runway 32, or the west, north, or northwest water lanes. Again, you can talk to approach and go at 1,200 feet. You can talk to approach and go at 2,200 feet MSL, of course, unless they tell you otherwise not to. But when you're talking to approach, you are automatically cleared into the Class Charlie airspace because you have two-way radio communication with approach. The only time they don't want you going in the Class Charlie airspace is when you don't have two-way radio communication with approach, 
or they tell you to remain clear of the Class Charlie airspace. Make sure you're directly over Point McKenzie when the west route is in use and you're arriving. Make sure you're directly over the boat hull when you're arriving on the east route. If you read these entire procedures, you can see that departing aircraft really only have about 300 feet vertical separation between you, and so some horizontal separation is also very nice to have, especially if the altimeters aren't that precise in some of these old airplanes we fly. Keep in mind, we flew the Tudor overpass when the west route was in use. Had we been coming from the north or northwest, we probably would have flown this procedure over top of Point McKenzie, then directly to the ballpark, crossing the Kinnick Arm at 1,200 feet MSL, and then making right traffic for runway 32. Instead, we flew the Tudor overpass, which brought us over this way along Tudor Road, and onto a right base for runway 32. Which procedure you fly is determined not only by whether the west route or east routes are in use, but also what direction you're coming from. So either way, on any of these procedures, two or overpass included, the most important thing, the single most important thing is if there is any confusion at all, go ahead and simply just ask ATC. Hit that little button in your cockpit, talk to ATC, ask them a question if you got it, whether you're talking to Approach or Anchorage Tower or Lake Hood Tower. If you have a question, simply ask way better to clarify in the air than have any sort of conflict with other traffic while you're airborne. So at the end of the day, just print these out. They're all available in the Alaska chart supplement. Keep them in your airplane. They got nice little pretty pictures, a little text right below there that tells you exactly what to do on these arrival and departure procedures. We will cover departure procedures in another video since this one's getting a little long-winded. We will also sit down with a Lake Hood Tower controller in our next video and ask him what he really wants to hear from us when we are arriving or departing Lake Hood. What does he want pilots to do and how can we do that nice and smoothly and effectively between us the pilots and ATC. Now this video is part of our Alaska series on educational flight training videos that we are adding to our private pilot courses. We are adding a ton of material to the website to fly at mikealpha.com on our private pilot course, instrument pilot course, and commercial pilot course, all those online ground schools and checkride prep courses. We are Alaska-fying them. So if you are going to be flying around the Anchorage area or anywhere in Alaska, and you want to learn more about Alaska flying, whether you are from here in Alaska or you're going to be coming up from the lower 48, we will be adding a ton of content for you this summer. And the next video on Lake Hood, how to depart Lake Hood, will be coming out in just a few short days. Keep an eye out for that here on this channel and check out the website flyatmikealf.com for tons more Alaska footage and a lot more Alaska instructional videos on there. Again, guys, if you have any questions on this at all, leave it right in the comments below. We are here to help you. Go on flatmikealf.com and post your question at the Ask a Question tab so one of our CFIs gets your question and we will respond to you. And if you can't fly every day, flyatmikealf.com. We'll see you guys in the next video.